This video is kindly sponsored by Scentbird. More on them later in the video. Hey, 42 here. If Ridley Scott's science fiction masterpiece, Alien, is to be believed, the creature known as Xenomorph XX121 is the perfect organism. It can survive in an extremely wide range of environments, including brief periods in the vacuum of space, its shining black exoskeleton is impervious to harm from all but the most devastating of attacks. Its whip-like tail is a lethal weapon that can strike from distance, and its extendable jaws will rip you apart if you're foolish enough to get in too close. If you do somehow manage to injure this ferocious beast, its highly acidic blood will melt your face off before you get the chance to press your advantage. Xenomorphs are also remarkable athletes. Running, jumping, swimming, you name it. Stick one of these guys in the Olympics and you'd have WADA on the phone demanding a urine sample within minutes. Combine all of that with a high degree of intelligence and you're left with an organism whose perfection is matched only by its hostility. Sadly, I think, these magnificent beasts don't appear to exist in our little corner of the universe, but it turns out that right here on Earth lives a creature every bit as impressive, perhaps even more so. Like the fearsome xenomorph, this animal has a tough exoskeleton and a whip-like tail, and with ten eyes and ten legs, it actually trumped Ridley Scott's alien in at least two departments. Just like the Xenomorph, this animal is incredibly tough and able to survive in a variety of environments, including both underwater and on land for extended periods of time. It even has acid for blood. Okay, so I made that one up. But its blood does have unique and powerful properties, properties that make it one of the most valuable liquids on planet Earth. This mystery creature truly is Earth's answer to the perfect organism. It must be doing something right anyway, because it's lived here for very close to half a billion years, making it one of the most ancient animal species ever identified. Without further ado, let me introduce you to the most incredible animal to have ever existed on Earth, the horseshoe crab. Okay, so it might not look quite as impressive as a xenomorph at first glance, although you have to admit it does give off a bit of a facehugger vibe. But seriously, amongst the trillions of species that have lived and died on Earth in the last 3.7 billion years or so, the horseshoe crab may just be the most remarkable. If that sounds hard to believe, I'm confident you'll have changed your mind by the end of this video. If you're anything like me, you know that buying a new fragrance can be a daunting and expensive task. Sure, one smells nice in the store, but you have a few seconds to make that call before you need to fork over a large sum of money to buy a large bottle of the stuff and just hope you still like how it smells in three months time. That's why Scentbird is so great. Scentbird is a subscription service for fragrance. Just like Netflix lets you watch many titles for a single price, Scentbird enables you to receive fragrances from over 600 brands like Prada, Gucci and Versace, as well as indie labels like Vince Camuto, The Harmonist and Confessions of a Rebel. In fact, they'll even help you to find your most suited scents through their simple quiz, previous purchases and preferences. Scentbird then sends you a 30-day supply. So, instead of spending $150 to $500 on just one bottle of fragrance, with Scentbird you can get a luxury fragrance for just $7 using my code. And all the scents come with their own stylish, colourful case. Scentbird is available in the US and Canada, so make sure you use my coupon code 4055 for 55% off, meaning it's just $7 for your first month. Use the link in the description below to try Scentbird today. When talking about ancient species, you'll often hear scientists, or David Attenborough types, explain that such and such a species lived when dinosaurs still walked the earth. It's the gold standard in species longevity. But it turns out that horseshoe crabs didn't just cohabit earth alongside the dinosaurs, they evolved 250 million years before dinosaurs even existed. 
The oldest horseshoe crab fossils found so far date back about 480 million years, and they look almost identical to the living, breathing animals still found in our oceans to this day. 480 million years is a genuinely absurd amount of time for one species to have survived. We're talking more than 10% of Earth's entire history. To put that number into context, our species, Homo sapiens, have been around for a measly 0.004% of the lifespan of our planet. Meaning, the humble horseshoe is about 2,500 times more ancient than we are. These epic survivors were around when the supercontinent Pangaea formed, and they watched it break apart again over the following 100 million years or so. They survived largely unchanged through at least three significant ice ages, and they're one of a tiny number of higher animals to have made it through four of Earth's five mass extinction events. If you've watched my recent video on the Great Dying, you'll know it was the deadliest mass extinction in Earth's history, especially for anything unfortunate enough to live in the era's boiling, acidic oceans. Conditions there were so inhospitable that an estimated 96% of marine species were lost. The horseshoe crab was part of the 4%. Perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised that these guys have survived so long, though. I mean, if you asked a game designer to come up with a biotank concept for some fictional alien species, it will probably look a fair bit like a horseshoe crab. But whilst they may look pretty scary, unless you're a worm or a small crustacean, they're actually almost entirely harmless. Their large size and self-healing exoskeletons keep them safe from the majority of potential predators. And whilst that spiny tail may look pretty vicious, it's rarely, if ever, used offensively. In fact, it isn't even used defensively. It's basically a Robot Wars-style self-writing mechanism that's employed if the crab ever gets flipped over in the surf. Though it certainly isn't obvious from looking at them, horseshoe crabs actually have 10 eyes of varying sophistication and they can detect ultraviolet as well as visible light. The main set are compound eyes, like those found in insects, and the rest are spread across the animal's body and tail, including a pair on the animal's underside. That might sound like an odd place to keep a set of eyes, but believe it or not, horseshoe crabs do actually make good use of them. Most of the time, the crab crawls around on the ocean bottom, but when they come across a barrier that defeats the combined effort of their 10 legs, they take to the water and swim upside down. And when you're flopping around arse over tit in the middle of the ocean, being able to see out of your gooch is actually pretty handy. If you're wondering why horseshoe crabs swim upside down in the first place, that's because they propel themselves through the water by pulsing their respiratory organs. That's a bit like swimming by flapping your lungs. These unusual organs, known as book gills, are located on the crab's underside at such an angle that makes swimming the right way up almost impossible. As well as necessitating one hell of a weird swimming stroke, these book gills are the reason horseshoe crabs can survive out of water for so long. Up to four days, in fact, provided the gills stay moist. I say that book gills are unusual because no other crab species has them. In fact, they're more commonly found in the form of book lungs in spiders and scorpions. The reason for this odd discrepancy is simple. Horseshoe crabs aren't actually crabs at all, nor are they even particularly closely related to crabs. As for what they are instead, well, the truth is, we still aren't 100% sure, but recent research seems to suggest they are in fact arachnids, making them more closely related to spiders and scorpions than crabs and lobsters. Rather fittingly for these kings of survival, horseshoe crabs have bright blue blood. That's because they use copper-containing hemocyanin rather than oxyhemoglobin to transport oxygen around their bodies. But horseshoe crab blood isn't just nice to look at, it's also incredibly valuable. A single litre of the stuff is worth around $15,000, making it one of the most expensive liquids on Earth, behind scorpion venom and everyone's favourite luxury liquid, horse semen.
As for why people pay so much for horseshoe crab blood, it turns out it's literally magical. Okay, not magical, but it's pretty amazing stuff. So amazing, in fact, that there's a fair chance you owe your life to it. If you've ever been given a vaccine, a pacemaker, an artificial heart valve, an artificial joint, or pretty much any intravenous injection of any kind, you probably owe a debt of gratitude to the humble horseshoe crab. You see, their weird blue blood contains cells called amoebocytes, which form a gel-like goo in the presence of harmful bacteria. That may not sound like such a big deal, but when scientist Frederick Bang discovered this unusual property in the 1950s, it was an absolute game changer for the pharma industry. At the time, there was no easy way to determine whether medical equipment and intravenous drugs were contaminated with dangerous bacteria. If, for example, you wanted to check that a vaccine was free of toxins, you had to first inject it into rabbits, then wait a few days and see if any of them died. It was expensive, it was time consuming, and it absolutely sucked if you were a rabbit. Frederick Bang realized he could harness the unique properties of horseshoe crab blood to test for toxins far more efficiently. In the crabs, amoebocytes form a protective gel barrier around any bacteria that happens to infiltrate the crab's bloodstream, preventing it from spreading. The cells are so finely tuned to the presence of harmful bacteria that they can detect toxins at levels of less than one part per trillion. It took him 20 years, but eventually, Dr. Bang developed a reliable test that, in as little as 45 minutes, could be used to ensure that medical devices, drugs, and vaccines were free from potentially lethal bacterial contamination. As great as this discovery was for us, and for rabbits, come to think of it, it's been less than ideal for horseshoe crabs. The LAL test, as it's known, has been an absolutely vital part of the healthcare industry for the last four decades. But we've needed increasingly vast quantities of horseshoe crab blood to fulfill the demand. Every year, more than half a million horseshoe crabs are harvested from the world's oceans for bloodletting, which is about as pleasant as it sounds. Horseshoe crab bleeding labs literally look like something out of a sci-fi horror film. The companies involved in blood extraction do at least aim to only take as much as the crabs can spare. But as you can probably imagine, being whisked up out of the ocean, strapped into a device designed to drain your blood alongside thousands of your mates, isn't exactly pleasant. As many as 30% of horseshoe crabs are thought to die in the process. There are also rumours that some bloodletting companies don't bother returning the crabs to the sea at all, and instead simply sell whatever survives to the fishing industry. Around half a million horseshoe crabs a year are used as bait to catch eels in the US alone. The sad thing is, a synthetic alternative to the LAL test has actually been around for almost 20 years. But uptake in the pharma industry has been slow, and our reliance on horseshoe crabs remains as strong as ever. Why? It's complicated, but it could be that extra validation steps are required when using the synthetic alternative, which adds time to vaccine development. And some argue it's also less reliable than the real deal. Considering the amount of pressure we're putting on their numbers, it probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise that horseshoe crabs are under threat. And things are only getting worse particularly with demand for their blood going through the roof over the last few years, as pharmaceutical companies have been racing to develop COVID-19 vaccines. It doesn't help that it's extremely difficult to breed horseshoe crabs in captivity. So whenever we need them, we pretty much always have to catch them in the wild. Half a billion years is plenty of time to get set in your ways. And one of the horseshoe crab's more unusual foibles is that they don't seem to breed unless they're in the presence of the same substrate they were spawned in. How exactly they're able to tell the difference? We literally have no idea. Apparently, they just know. Whilst I admit the xenomorph comparison I made at the start of this video may have been just a tiny bit ambitious, there's no denying that horseshoe crabs are truly amazing creatures. Of the trillions of species that have lived and died on this planet, 
the fearsome carnivores, the apex predators, the giants of land and sea. It's these ridiculously weird and unassuming little animals that have proven themselves to be the ultimate survivors. Overcoming ice ages and asteroid strikes, just like they were minor inconveniences. It really would be a terrible tragedy if their half a billion year existence on planet Earth was brought to an end because of us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to try Scentbird and use my coupon code 4055 for 55% off. That's just $7 for your first month. It's a great service with some amazing fragrances, so don't miss out. The link's in the description below.